ever noticed how each grain of sand is unique? William Blake must have noticed this when he wrote, To see a world in a grain of sand. We travel to far-flung places, whether above or below the water, searching for unique people, places and pursuits, to discover their world. So as Robert Frost would say, you come too. Hi, I'm Hazel Andrea Stewart. I would like you to meet a very remarkable person in this film. But before I introduce you to him, I would like to give a little background. My husband David, who is American, grew up in Iloilo as the son of the first president of Central Philippine University. He always wanted to come back, so in 1998 we came back. Now, having made over 50 television documentaries on the Philippines, David and I were about to move to Bacolod. But eight days before our move, David passed away. I arrived in a daze, packing cases all around. If the truck was still outside, I thought of loading all the stuff and going back to Iloilo. But that was when I got a text from an angel. I will never forget you, Elaine, never. The text said, welcome to Bukolod. You are now one of our Bacolod non family. I meant to stay, obviously, and how. Thank you, Elaine, I'll never forget that. And then the next morning, another angel arrived, complete with plumber and carpenter, Belle Tampinko, whom I hardly knew, how can I ever thank you for what you did for me? In no time at all, shelves were put up and furniture was in place. You really are an angel, and I can never, ever thank you enough. Now I'd like you to meet the main character in this film. And by the way, Annabelle Sells, thank you very much for finding us the house. On a calm and sunlit day, there is peace in the subdivision, when all at once a chariot appears. As the great Robert Harland is, uh, great, a larger tricycad was necessary, so all the way from San Carlos this chariot was commissioned. So what's the purpose of this vehicle? Well, I thought it would be a rather uh, pleasant and sedate way of showing my five-month-old son, Robert <laughs> Jr., the subdivision. Get a little bit of fresh air and nothing racy, just round and round, and he could have a good look at all the trees, all the houses, and all the people, take it all in, we're, and we're in no rush. With his mother, Stessie, Robert Harlan Jr. is obviously enjoying this family outing in beautiful Bacolod. So serious we are. Just like Daddy. Robert is a man of many parts, having just graduated as a chef from St. LaSalle University, and his Cornish pasties are to die for. Keep peddling, Robert. And cooking.
Robert Harland is a remarkable man. Besides retiring here to the Philippines, having been vice president for Asia for a major corporation, his latest escapade is becoming a tour guide and graduating as one of only three out of 15, which makes him possibly the only British registered tour guide, maybe in the Philippines. Here he is in action in the beautiful San Sebastian Cathedral, we call it. The San Sebastian Cathedral is the work of a Spanish priest, Father Mauricio Ferrero. He was the parish priest of Bacolod from 1871 to 1898. Of course, 1898 is a significant date. That's when the Spanish left the Philippines. It was discovered he missed Negros because after a short spell as a professor at the University of Barcelona, he returned to become again the parish priest from 1902 to 1910. Now, Father Ferrero was a very talented man. He had a special talent for design and architecture. Had always been on this site, a church from about 1841, a rather flimsy affair with a galvanized roof and uh, uh, wooden walls. So, Father Ferrero decided it was time for a grander church for Colod. He drew up the plans. He submitted the plans, the bishop agreed, but warned him there was no budget for labor. But the ever enterprising priest had an idea. He went to the Spanish military governor and asked if he could use the prisoners from the local prison to construct the cathedral, or the, as it was then, parish church. The governor agreed, but on one condition. He said, uh, Father, no problem, but I would like you to design and oversee the construction of a stone jail. Father Ferrero immediately agreed and work started on San Sebastian Church in 1776. Work was completed in 1882 and the church was consecrated on the eve of San Sebastian, January 19, 1882. It was a very grand occasion for all the local bigwigs the church officials, government officials attended and the church from January 20, 1882 went on to serve, as it continues today, the local community extremely well. Three years later the two towers were constructed, the first one on the right and bells were installed. There had been a bell already in the original church, Father Ferrero donated a further bell. In the same year a large organ was constructed. The Paris Church became a cathedral in 1933 when Bicolod was declared a diocese. By 1969, the church which had served the community so well was in a rather sorry state. It had not been particularly well maintained, so it was decided to do a complete restoration. The two towers were rebuilt, but the bells were not brought back to the towers. They were instead uh, installed in the front of the cathedral. The Lions Club of Sugarlandia uh, built a special stand and the bells can be seen there today. The cathedral was built of coral stone which came from Gimaras, the island between Bacolot and Nilo Hilo. It was mixed with uh, hundreds of thousands of egg whites and lime to harden it up. And the hardwood came from Palawan. Now, Father Ferreira also designed and oversaw the construction of the bishop's house, which is next door. This, however, was not built by prisoners. It was built by, uh, by Chinese artisans. The papal room where Pope John Paul II, when he visited the Colon in 1981, this is where he changed his pontificals before moving on to celebrate another mass in the city. We're now in Burgos Street, also known as Millionaire's Row. It's an extraordinary street of uh, houses of, of unusual architecture and the most unusual and possibly uh, one of the most unusual houses you'll find anywhere in the Versailles is this house here, which is known locally as the White House. It was built in 1936 by Generoso Villanueva in the what they call streamlined modern art deco style very popular in the US 
in the 30s. The house features three floors and at the time was the only dwelling in the Versailles which had a, an elevator. Now Generoso Villanueva, although born with a silver spoon in his mouth, was very much a man of the people and he very rarely turned anyone who needed help away. He also had a very strong entrepreneurial streak. He established the first taxi company in the city, a trucking company, even had a theatre called the People's Theatre. In 1948, Generoso uh, Villanueva was able to pick up one of his favourite projects. The family owned, and uh, still does, a vast amount of land in the east of the city going towards Granada. And one of his pet projects, which is still going strong today, was started in 1948, the Santa Fe Resort. He wanted this to be a resort for well-to-do people as well as ordinary man in the street. It's very interesting that uh, I think London has more now, but it was an occasion when London had a population of about 5 million people. There was only one 50-metre Olympic-sized pool, and that was in Crystal Palace. But here in Bacolod, a population of less than half a million, we have two Olympic-sized 50-metre pools, one here at Santa Fe and the other in Panaad. So we're pretty well uh, looked after here, taken care of uh, if you like swimming. Beautiful pool. What a beautiful resort and what a fun place for children. You've been general manager here? Mm, 12 years. And what is the date of the resort? The date of the resort, this was made in 1952. I really don't know what month was it. It was made that after one of the chi uh, children of the owner died in the plane crash, which was my mother-in-law. He was so sad, so he started building this place and that kept him going on. Wow. Yeah, he's a man of soil, the grandfather. We have 36 rooms, mm -hmm. good for two or four persons or family rooms. Okay. We have a mini hotel in individual cottages and a dormitory that can accommodate for 120 persons. Wow. It's aircon. Mm -hmm. okay. And this function hall this is the Cactus Hall. It can accommodate 300 persons for a, a wedding or a party or any event you would want to have. I believe you have the Ictus worship. Do they come yes. and worship? Every Sunday here since oh. last month, last May. Mm -hmm. Oh dear, this I don't like. To see an animal in such a small cage is sad. But I wonder if the Brahmani kite will talk to me. This is me. There is a chemical you can put into swimming pools so that if anyone pees in the pool, uh, it is a dye, so it goes blue or red. But they decided in England not to use this chemical because uh, knowing English children, they would all see who could make the longest line or <laughs> <laughs> who could make the, 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 the biggest cloud of colour in the pool. So. Is that good? Delicious. Not as good as a beer, but delicious. <laughs> when Hena Villanueva died in 1965, there was a great outpouring of grief from the many people he had helped during his lifetime. His casket was carried from San Sebastian Cathedral all the way to the Bacolod Public Cemetery. 
and so many people wanted to take it in turns to help carry the coffin to pay their last respects and to say farewell to their benefactor. The children of Haven's home were in for a treat. A beautiful boat was waiting for them. Awesome had no difficulty in looking superior as he's an old hand at boats. Phil Seckler, on the other hand, is not really into boats, but put on a brave face. Um, who rode this boat before? Is this the first time for everybody? Yeah. Raise your hand. Yay. First time to be in the boat? Cool. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah, bye -bye. Good time. Yeah. Then it was off to Lakawan Island. Some just wanted to hang out in the sand while others faced more water than they'd ever seen in their lives. Anna Balcells joined in the fun as her Kalipa Negrense Foundation was helping to sponsor the event and the lunch. <laughs> and what a lunch! Afterwards, there was only one thing to do, take a nap. But where was the owner of the boat? Robert Harland is very generous with his boat and today was a special treat for the children. <laughs> but all good things come to an end as they say and it was soon time to leave. But there was a special moment in store. 